Hello, I'm Eileen McHugh with the BBC News. President Biden has given an impassioned speech in support of voting rights reform, saying the next few days could mark a turning point for US democracy. Speaking in the past hour in Atlanta, Georgia, Mr Biden said he supported changes to Senate rules which would allow the reforms to be passed without Republican support. Sadly, the United States Senate, designed to be the world's greatest deliberative body, has been rendered a shell of its former self. Gives me no satisfaction in saying that. I believe that the threat to our democracy is so grave that we must find a way to pass these voting rights bills. Debate them. Vote. Let the majority prevail. And if that bare minimum is blocked, we have no option but to change the Senate rules, including getting rid of the filibuster for this. The president said he was tired of being quiet on the issue. The proposed legislation would enable the federal government to override restrictions on voting passed by Republican-controlled states. The Cuban president, Miguel Diaz-Canel, has accused the United States of carrying out horrific abuse against prisoners detained at the Guantanamo military base for the past 20 years. His comments come on the 20th anniversary of the arrival of the first detainees. Leonardo Rocha reports. Almost 800 suspected Islamist militants were detained at Guantanamo Bay. Mr. Diaz Canel said that many had been subjected to torture over the past 20 years. He also accused the US of illegally occupying the naval base, which is on Cuban territory. Cuba has been demanding the US leave since the revolution of 1959, which led to the installation of a communist government on the island. Only 39 detainees remain in Guantanamo, and the American government spends about half a million dollars a year to keep it open. The official anti-corruption agency in Liberia says it's placed the entire leadership of the Ministry of Agriculture under investigation for alleged conflict of interest and financial impropriety. The commission said contracts worth millions of dollars had been awarded inappropriately. Jonathan Pelele reports. The LSCC accuses the officials of reckless disregard for public financial management laws, public procurement laws, and the country's code of conduct for public officials. Agriculture Minister Jenny Cooper told the BBC they hadn't received any communication from the anti-graft body regarding the allegations and investigation. However, the minister said they were ready to comply with any such investigation. The authorities in Burkina Faso have announced the arrest of eight soldiers who are accused of plotting a coup. Among those arrested is Colonel Mohamed Emmanuel Zungrana, a well-known former army commander. The last coup in Burkina Faso took place seven years ago. World News from the BBC. North Korea has said that it successfully tested a hypersonic missile on Tuesday morning. State media announced that the launch was attended by the country's leader, Kim Jong-un. It was the second missile test in a week by North Korea and happened as the UN Security Council met in New York to discuss Pyongyang's testing programme. The missile plunged into the sea east of the Korean peninsula. The World Health Organization has warned that a tidal wave of Omicron coronavirus cases is sweeping across Europe. A senior official, Dr. Hans Henry Kluger, said half the continent's population will have been infected within six to eight weeks. The figure is based on the seven million new cases reported across Europe in the first week of this year. Another WHO official, Mike Ryan, said colleagues had to alter their graphs to keep up with the surge. We've been using these graphs. <laughs> two years and we literally had to change the scale of the graph just to get the peak in on the graph which shows you just how uh, widespread the infection is right now and that's in the context of very limited availability of tests even in developed and industrialized countries it's very hard to get a test now the UN is calling on the Tunisian authorities to either release or properly charge the country's former justice minister Nouradine Bahiri has been detained for suspected terrorism offenses the 63-year-old deputy chairman of the Islamist Inada party was arrested outside his home by plainclothes officers at the end of last month. No explanation was given. Scientists have warned that the warming climate is likely to have an increasingly devastating impact on buildings and infrastructure built near the Arctic Circle. They say the thawing of the permafrost, a permanently frozen layer of soil, has already caused significant damage to homes, pipelines and roads. Canada and Alaska are badly affected, though most of the impact is in Russia. BBC News.